Are you in a committed relationship? You might not be for long because studies show that relationships around the world are being smashed by the pandemic and divorce lawyers, of all people, are predicting a new divorce pandemic after we get through this one. Coronavirus and its impact. Not only has it halted a lot of businesses, events and family gatherings, it's also caused a lot of marriages to go belly up. I don't want a marriage going all belly up, do you? But is that what you're experiencing in your life? I mean, the fact is, is that the pandemic is tearing things apart. Ordinary things like attending births, attending funerals, all up in the air. And in the claustrophobia of your relationship, new fissures and fractures could be exposed, making it go disgustingly belly up. Millions of families across the USA are sheltering in place and they're spending a lot of time together. But instead of bringing them closer, some married couples are saying it's time, at least when the crisis is over, to go their separate ways and file for divorce. Well, stay together for the pandemic. Well, there's no point divorcing you now. These arguments are giving me something to do. But once this pandemic's over, I'm out of here. The pandemic might have postponed a lot of weddings, but it's had the opposite effect on divorces. Divorce rates in the U.S. spiking 34%. What do you think that is? You think people don't actually get on with each other and you just, I don't know, I don't really get on with you, but I don't see you anywhere. I'm out all day and I go and see my mates. And it's like, everyone, you're standing doors all the time. I hate you. <laughs> it's like it's suddenly been revealed. Now, I know there's a very dark side to this because, you know, the increase in domestic violence, domestic abuse, a concentration brought about by the poverty and imprisonment that our social conditions have probably long uh, required, but have also masked through the distraction provided by booze and entertainment and being out of the office all day. What does it say about the institution of marriage? What does it say about the cost, the price we are paying culturally and socially for the pandemic lockdown laws? COVID-19 has brought on a lot of issues in our everyday lives, of course. The Citizens Advice Bureau said views on its divorce web page in September up 25%. What are you doing on that internet? Oh, I'm just wanking. <laughs> are you looking at divorces? No, no. Oh, 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 look at that bum. Of those people getting divorced this year, 31% say the pandemic and lockdown is to blame. When looking at the reasons behind arguments, 11% of them are children, I strongly identify, finances, always finances. 31% of couples say the quarantine has been damaging. I'm in a marriage and... I don't think it has been damaging. And I would say that the reason for that is this. Both myself and the woman I'm married to are fortunate enough to have therapy in our lives. I'm a 12-step person. I have a program around around sort of mental health and well-being that's sort of primarily about taking responsibility for my own actions and tr trying not to project my problems onto a, another person because I bet a lot of these relationships are breaking up. I mean, I was joking about it. People are discovering they don't actually like each other now that they're forced to be in each other's company. But also, many of us inhabit relationships where we unconsciously project onto another person attributes and qualities that we need to discover with within ourselves, particularly and, and most obviously in very romantic relationships where you're incredibly in love with someone. We know that that inevitably falters and wanes when you discover that a person cannot function in your psyche as a kind of deity because they are just a person like you, flawed, fallible, with a belly and guts. That's why they're going belly up, as a matter of fact. So I reckon that the pandemic, for all of its horrors and all of the questions that it uh, brings up about the way that we run society, etc., etc., and whether the lockdown laws are right or wrong or whatever, what we could use it as is an opportunity to see what the limitations are of our own models of perception. You know, like I have to accept the fact that I can't make my wife responsible for my happiness. It's not her job. I have to be responsible for my emotional well-being. Many of us, by, by virtue of our nature, do not address our pathology, the decisions, behaviours that, that we engage in that we don't know that we're doing. They just roll out inertly into our lives. The pandemic has put a hold on things. And I think the reason many people's relationships are suffering is because they're being forced to confront what projections we have. So me, although I sometimes get frustrated, me and my wife argue a bit, but we, I feel like we have a method a discourse for dealing with our confrontations. We have big projects. We're raising children together. We have pets together. We live together. We're monogamous couple. These are really challenging things to deal with in life. I believe they're insurmountable, pandemic or otherwise, unless you have a clear dialogue and a clear willingness to 
focus only on changing yourself and let go absolutely of changing other people. You've probably seen the jokes on social media about how after the coronavirus epidemic is over, birth rates and divorce rates are going to go up. That's a terrible joke. <laughs> it is a joke. Birth rates and divorce rates are going up. Yeah, well, that's hilarious. I'm chuckling all the way to the psychiatrist. And when it comes to divorce among the uber rich, the sagging economy is also spurring the path to Splitsville. <laughs> Splitsville, baby, we're, we're all heading to Splitsville. And also it drops in that the pandemic is serving to uh, ossify or fortify the wealth of the uber rich. Do you think these things could be connected? The fact that we're over reliant on our romantic relationships, that we place undue pressures on one another, that we live in arbitrary social systems that send us off into little cells, basically a feudal system where the majority of people have little or no control over their life other than the choices of the, you know, what type of hoodie they wear. Thanks for noticing. But when in fact what you want to be able to control is the actual stuff of your life, an opportunity to live your deathbed values. This is you. This is your life. Do you love this person? What are we going to do? Can we make the best of it? Am I projecting all my needs and wants onto another person? Or indeed, back to the hoodie. These things that are being presented as entertainment obviously are identifying a huge problem that exists like most of the problems brought to the surface by this pandemic. With or without it, the pandemic just brings them into sharp focus. Many of us feel trapped. Many of us feel lost. Many of us feel like we're living purposeless lives. And in fact, the idea of a purposeful life seems more and more distant. Some attorneys say filings have skyrocketed since the pandemic and therapists are seeing the same rise in their businesses. What I feel it is, is we perhaps need to re-examine what our expectations are of the people that we are in love with. Have you made that person function as a sort of a kind of a harbour, an icon of, of potential perfection? How do you see your partner? Because most of the wisdom that I've had passed to me that's been of any bloody use has been do not see your partner as sort of enmeshed in you or responsible for you. See them as someone that is parallel to you. And whenever you notice that you feel sort of in your stomach or nervous or insecure, then deal with that in yourself. I've been told communication is a non-negotiable though. So that sort of might seem somewhat at odds with the first thing I said, because you take responsibility for your own emotions, but I've been told to communicate everything, to communicate about any concerns you have about your sex life, your financial life, your fears. Otherwise, I suppose you will carve out some corner of your existence in which you think paradise may lay. You know, you may think, oh, if I could only have this, it's very easy to start making someone a solution or the cause of your problems, when really they are neither. The point, I suppose, of marriage in particular is to make a bond that is able to withstand disruption and doubt. Like, that's the point of it, isn't it? It's like, right, ugh, wedlock, we're in this lock now. Like, that's the point of it. You go through that ceremony, you declare in front of sort of God or an ideal, however you see it, and people that the pair of you know that you love one another and you're making a commitment. Precisely because inevitably down the line, problems are going to happen. The pressures of the outside world are going to be upon you. Uh, recently, a mentor of mine said that not enough attention is given to how challenging a marriage is and what an achievement it is to stay in one, to be able to overcome it. I suppose that what this, the lens of this pandemic might provide is an opportunity to, for you to look at yourself and your own relationship and to consider what your expectations are. Consider which of those expectations are reasonable and which of them are kind of uh, fantasies. And I suppose be grateful if you are in a relationship that you live with someone. Dallas divorce attorney Jennifer Hargrave says her business has doubled since the pandemic began. Last month alone, she filed six times as many cases as she did last year. People are really stuck. She's beaming her way through. She loves it. Look at her face in this still. I'm not criticizing this person. She's a human being. I love her and all of that. But my God, is she enjoying these divorces? People can't stand it. I got six times as much money in my house. And having to face the reality that the marriage isn't working. I calm down. It is basically a sad thing. I mean, of course, if you're in a relationship, you shouldn't be. And if you're harmed, if you're not safe, you should get out of that relationship. No one's doubting that. 
but don't grin from ear to ear at <laughs> the prospect of people that once declared that they loved one another having to carve up all their goods and possessions and the other myriad complex problems that come from it. The shutdown has changed our routines without commutes to the office, childcare, sports practices and other activities. If I ever find myself in a bit of archive footage of a couple walking along where it's like a picture of my ass in trousers holding hands with someone, all right, get my ass out of that. We're happily married. Now all of a sudden people are spending all day together. Hargrave says all that time is magnifying problems and exposing secrets. That's a weird image, isn't it? Someone's just torn up a wedding photo. That's not a necessary part of the divorce procedure. And now tear up a wedding photo to only too bloody gladly. Her clients now getting Zoom divorces. All meetings, mediation, court hearings and trials virtual. Is there anything that suggests to you the entrenchant grip of a dystopia more than a Zoom divorce? Sorry, you, you're going to have to unmute yourself. I said, I fucking hate you. I want to get out of this marriage. All right, I'm only downstairs. Most civil courts are closed unless it's an emergency, which means most divorce proceedings are happening online. Virtual divorces are allowing people to get a divorce from the comfort of their own home. <laughs> what a lovely, comfy divorce this is when I see the rail tracks of my future wrenched up and a gaping abyss. Ooh, let's see what's on Sky Sports. So that means people are trading the court bench for their couches. I didn't have to go drive downtown and look for parking or pay for parking. Well, mate, what you did have to do is divorce whoever it was you're married to. And doing it with a little spring in your step. Divorce has never been easier. You just turn on your laptop, flip it up and fuck off your marriage. This local divorcee who asked that we not show his face. I'm a divorcee. I've always thought divorcee because I've been divorced one time. I don't want to be a divorcee. It's too, I don't want to go like that far up at the end of a word that's about something being foreclosed. Shares his experience with a virtual divorce proceeding. It's actually good because you don't have to be in the same room with people that you don't really want to. So I, it was actually a really positive experience. Culture's ruined, isn't it? It's just ruined, we've broken it. Broken it, you haven't had it 10 minutes, you broke it already. We've only had civilization, as we know it, a couple of thousand years, hundreds of thousands of years before that, tribes, 10,000 years ago, advent of agriculture. Look at this. Oh, it's beautiful, really, because you don't have to be in the same room as someone. You don't have to go downtown and find change for parking. We're talking about a sacred bond <laughs> between two people who love one another and declare that love before God. Divorce attorney Joe Napoli is embracing the technology as his clients split up via video conference. It's not surprising that divorce is increasing in the pandemic as we are confronted with reality. Not the reality that we don't get on with another person, more likely the reality that we have expectations of other people that are unconscious and unexamined, that we are unwilling to take responsibility for our own wellness. Of course, people that are in unhappy relationships should certainly get out of them. But the pandemic provides a lot of opportunities for reflection, if reflection is something we're willing to do. As was said by uh, Thich Nhat Hanh of the cell phone, now we have less need to spend time with ourselves than ever before. We live in a culture of distraction, continual stimulation. It's therefore hardly surprising that when we are confronted with a dose of reality, in, even in the humble terms of our own domesticity, we find ourselves unable to deal with it. Unless we journey within and become willing to take responsibility for our own emotions and for our own emotional and spiritual journey, it's more and more likely that we'll see further cataclysmic social and personal events, more and more divorce, more and more dissipation and breakdown. I'm not a pro-marriage uh, person, by the way. I mean, I love my marriage and I think being in a couple is a delightful thing. But what I think is interesting is the desecration of certain values, such as it's necessary to work on love and it's vital that we do not project our problems outward. We recognise that most change can occur within and from this place of awakening, broader social change can take place.